Hey everyone, today we're going to go over five things you should know about Python before your next technical interview. We'll talk about things to remember as well as some tips and tricks about Python so you can ace your next interviews. Python is typically used as a scripting language, but you may be asked an object-oriented programming question during your interview. Let's run through an example of how you can create classes and objects in Python. And let's start with making a class for employees in a company. The first thing we need to do when making a class in Python is to define the initialization function. Let's initialize our class with the first name, last name, and salary of an employee. Make sure to include self as a parameter in your initializing function. Self refers to the current instance of the Python class. To make sure that we save the name and salary of the employee, we need to make class variables for the corresponding initializing arguments. A class variable is denoted by the notation self.variableName. We can also create a class variable for the email of the employee, which we can construct with the other class variables. Let's make a setter function that allows us to change the salary of an employee. We can make a class function with self as an argument and the new salary as another argument. We'll update the salary class variable by setting the class variable to the new salary. Another important idea to remember for object-oriented programming questions is inheritance. Inheritance is the ability to create subclasses that contain specializations of their parents. Let's create a new class for a developer in our company that inherits the class functions and variables of the employee class. To define a class that inherits functions and variables from another class, make sure to pass the parent class as a function to the new class. When creating our initialization function for a new class, let's pass in the first name, last name, and salary again. In addition, we can add more variables that are unique to a developer, like a list of programming languages that this developer knows. Since the developer class is a subclass of an employee, we must initialize the superclass with the needed arguments first. Inside the superclass, we can create a new class variable that is the list of programming languages that the developer knows. We can create a new function specific for developers that adds a new language to the list of ones they already know. We can test the code we wrote by initializing an employee class and a developer class. Let's try to access class variables and functions for the employee class. We can try to access employee class methods on the developer to make sure that we have inherited the functions. When we execute our code, we see that we are able to access and update the salary for the developer and the employee, as well as update languages that the developer knows. When printing in Python, we can use string formatting to properly print values and avoid issues like type mismatching. String formatting allows you to insert variable names in strings wherever you want. String formatting uses percent symbols to do simple positional formatting with ease, and it works very similarly to printf and c. For example, use percent %s to tell Python to substitute the value of name to a string. You can also format strings with multiple substitutions by using this operator on a tuple of values. There are other options like percent %i for integers, percent %x for hexadecimal, and percent %f for floating point numbers. After executing our program, we see that we have properly formatted our string. In Python 3.6, you can use formatted string literals, or f strings. F strings allow you to use embedded Python expressions inside string constants. To do so, you just include an F in front of the string and use brackets to put the value of the variable in the string. You can even do arithmetic inside F strings. Let's execute our program again. We can see that we have properly formatted our string and we are able to perform arithmetic inside the string. A lot of the algorithms you will see in coding interviews depend on a specific data structure to work effectively. In particular, the data structure you use to solve a problem can have a significant impact on the running time of your algorithm. Let's go over some of the most commonly used built-in data structures in Python and their differences. First off, a list in Python is an ordered sequence of elements that can have a variable length. Built-in functions like append, pop, insert, sort, and remove allow lists to be used in many different ways. Append and insert allow us to add a new element to either the end of the list or a specific index. We can sort the list using built-in functions and we can even remove elements using remove and pop. We can also use a list to mimic other data structures like a queue and a stack, and that may come up in coding interviews. If we want to use a list as a stack, we can use append to add elements and pop to remove the last element. If we want to use a list as a queue, we can use append to add elements and pop to remove the first element. Calling pop with index 0 will remove and return the first element in our list. 
Let's run our program to see that we are able to use a list as a queue and a stack. Next, a set in Python is an iterable data structure that only contains unique values. Built-in functions such as add, remove, pop, union, and intersection allow sets to be used in a variety of coding interview problems. Usually when a problem asks for unique solutions to a question, it may be related to using a set. For example, we can use a set to get the unique values from lists and to get the intersection or union between these sets. We can use the ampersand to take the intersection between two sets. Let's now run our program to see that we are able to take the intersection between two sets. Finally, a dictionary in Python is a very useful tool as you can map a key to a value. Dictionaries are very efficient because the time it takes to look up the value for a key is O of 1. Questions that map a certain key to a value almost always require dictionaries. For example, we can use a dictionary to match a name to their age. We can also iterate over this dictionary using the items function. Let's run our program to see that we are able to use a dictionary to map a name to a person's age. I wanted to take a minute to talk more about the feature on the right side of my screen here. That's Kite's Copilot. Kite is a tool that uses machine learning for useful code completions in Python. It also allows you to look up docs so you don't have to go to Google. You can download it for various different IDEs, so check out kite.com to learn more. Expanding off of lists, using list comprehension makes complex operations on lists easier to read and understand. Instead of using functions such as map and filter, we can use list comprehension to transform a list or create a new list based upon a certain condition. For example, let's create a new list from a pre-existing list such that all elements of the new list are even. We can do this by using list comprehension using the syntax here. Without using list comprehension, we would use a for loop and append to a list if an element satisfies a requirement. Using list comprehension, however, we are able to do this faster. Likewise, we can apply a function to each element on our list using list comprehension. Check out the link in the description below to a video to learn more about how you can use list comprehension to speed up your coding. Now let's run our program to see that we are able to take a subset of our original list as well as apply a function to each element in the list. One of the best things about Python is that it comes with a lot of functionality that's just an import statement away. Knowing which standard library to leverage for a technical interview could be the difference between getting the job and not. For example, we can use collections.defaultDict, and this will set a default value for all possible unset keys. If you want to map a key to a list of values, you can use collections.defaultDictList. And if you try to access a key that doesn't exist, you will be returned an empty list instead of raising a key error. Here's another neat example. You can count hashable objects using collections.counter and make it easier to count the occurrences of objects. You can even get the objects with the highest n occurrences by using most common n. When we execute our program, we see that our counter maps a value to the number of occurrences of that value in our list. When we output the most common numbers, we see that 1 has occurred 3 times and 5 has occurred twice in our list. During your technical interviews, knowing how to take advantage of Python's features can play a significant role in getting the correct solutions. Remembering how to do things in Python, such as list comprehension, object-oriented programming, inheritance, and picking the best data structure to use, these things will make a difference in acing that interview. And that's why you should subscribe now to our channel. We're releasing more coding interview tips and tricks each week that you will not want to miss. Click subscribe to stay in the loop on that, plus keep up with other helpful videos about Python and software development in general. Finally, don't forget to download Kite now for free to start coding faster. The link is in the description below and we'll see you next time.